What's up, the squad? It's your favorite auntie with Uncle Tendencies back with Sess Talk Sports Presents now joining the conversation. Me and Coach got a new segment that we bring in, Dynamo Duos, where we're going to be looking at some of the most dynamic duos that we're looking forward to watching in the WNBA. And we are starting this segment off with none other than Aaliyah Boston and Caitlin Clark. Um, probably one of the most <laughs> one of the most anticipated duos to be watched this season. Uh, give, give a little bit about uh, Caitlin, a little bit about uh, Aaliyah, and then we will uh, jump into a conversation with Coach and uh, break down a few things about what we think about this season. So uh, Caitlin Clark, of course, coverage has been everywhere. She's a college cessation coming in as a WNBA rookie, uh, born on January 22nd, 2020, 2002 in West Des Moines, Iowa, emerged as a basketball prodigy at University of Iowa. College career, of course, went from 2020 to 2024. Record-breaking performances, uh, electri- elect- electrifying style of play that captivated a lot of fans nationwide. She's about six feet tall, uh, played as a guard, and was known for her her scoring ability. the the logo The logo three, sharp shooting from long range, uh, and her knack for for I think clutch performances, ice in her veins. You could say that some of the key highlights from her career. She's three time consistent All American. Uh, she earned this proceed prestigious honor in 2022, 2023, and 2024, uh, underscoring kind of, I guess, like her scoring dominance in women's college basketball over that time. National scoring leader, she led the nation in scoring for multiple seasons, uh, again, showcasing just that uh, ability to score from anywhere on the court. You got to guard her as soon as she get in the, in the locker room. She set several Iowa and Big Ten records, including the single game scoring high uh, and assist as well. Nancy, Nancy Lieberman Award, winning this award multiple times. She is recognized as the top point guard in the nation. She also won the Dawn Staley Award, I believe, three years in a row. Uh, she has an ability to influence the game, extended uh, way beyond scoring. She also averages uh, impressive assist numbers, uh, making her one of the, the top players, of course, in college in college hoops. Her leadership on the court was instrumental in leading Iowa back to that, um, back-to-back appearances in the, in the NCAA championship. Uh, unfortunately, they weren't able to close that deal, but it's a, a heck of a feat just getting back there two years in a row. So first year, uh, took the L to LSU. Second year, taking the L to, uh, of course, South Carolina and Raven on the Revenge Tour. Uh, a lot of anticipation for Caitlin's rookie season in the WNBA. She was, of course, selected number one by the Indiana Fever. It, 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 right, listen, they are expecting sky high. uh impact from Caitlin coming into the league. I believe that she's going to have a learning curve. Um, and I, I believe that's to, to be expected. She's got a lot of work that she's going to have to do on the defensive end. And I think that that's going to be uh, demanded of her. So I think while the scoring is there, she's going to spend a, a great deal of the, the early part of her WNBA career uh, getting comfortable with defense and, and the expectations that they're going to have for her when she's on the floor. Um, as far as defense goes, I don't think that they're worried about her being able to score. Um, I saw her, you know, getting some 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 ankle breaking work in um on some of the some of the clips from some of the workouts already for the Indiana Fever. So I expect that 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 dynamic playmaking um will continue. Uh that she she's been seen as a transformative player. She should be able to immediately elevate the play of her teammates and uh the team's overall competitiveness. This is gonna be a rookie season in the WNBA. It's gonna be closely watched. She's teaming up with uh, last year's top pick, Aaliyah Boston, which I was really looking forward to because I think that they can be uh, one of the most dynamic duos uh, in the league. I think uh, Boston, she's already established herself as 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 a presence in the game, okay, and in the league. And uh, I think Caitlin Clark is gonna be the perfect complement to her with the perimeter oriented game that she'll be able to bring as once she's able to also bring along that defense. Uh, the combination of Boston and Clark, it should, it should be a great one. Uh, it, it, it should create one of the most intriguing and potent duos. Uh, Boston's going to ha- still have the ability to dominate the inside uh, offensively and defensively like, like she showed us last year uh, when she finished rookie of the year. And with, with Clark shooting and playmaking skills, uh, that should provide Indiana Fever with a with a balanced and, and dynamic attack. Uh, this duo has the potential to challenge defenses in, in a lot of different ways, making it difficult for opponents to focus on on, on stopping just one, uh, which I think will increase Indiana Fever's um, opportunity to, to, to really be um, become a contender in, in, in the league as far as as far as playoff goes. Uh, with the addition of, of Kalen, uh, the, the Indiana Fever are expected to, to of course, see um, 
not only the significant improvement in their performance, but a significant improvement in the bottom line. I mean, tickets uh, for the the preseason game are, are more than the NBA playoff game right now. So uh, they they are they are they are spending the money to to come out and see this see, see these young ladies and, and and the the talent that they brought to the to the WNBA. And I, I really hope that this is a good sign of these things being able to continue um, and spread throughout the league to to the other teams as well. Um, her ability to draw defenses and uh, create opportunities for herself and others is going to be key to uh, getting them going. A, a playoff appearance is a realistic expectation for them, uh, but a lot of that is going to depend on how quickly Clark and Boston uh, gel on the court. If their chemistry develops pretty quickly, uh, the Fever could uh, not only secure a playoff spot, but they could they can make a deep run, depending on their ability, of course, you know, to stay healthy. And I'm hoping everybody stays healthy. I, I don't want any – any injuries in, in, in the league at all this season? How about that? Let's speak that into existence. Uh, and just if they're able to continue improving and gelling along the way um, as they as they hit the hit the ebbs and flows of, of the season, um, we, we're, we're going to have that that weird break where they, where they kind of stop playing and, and, and go to the Olympics. And by that point, Caitlin will be able to play – will be able to play a whole lot of basketball. And I, I, I don't want her to hit a, a rookie wall. So I, I am concerned about that. But I think basically our transition from uh, – you know, college basketball to WNBA rookie is um, marking the beginning of a new and exciting era for the Indiana Fever. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what they're able to do. Next up, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Aaliyah Boston. Of course, uh, she went from college phenom to WNBA star, uh, born December 11, 2001 in St. Thomas, uh, Virgin Islands. She has established herself as one of the most dominant figures in women's college basketball history. Of course, playing for the South Carolina Gamecocks from 2019 to 2023, a freshie. Her impact was immediate. It was profound. Standing six foot five, Boston combined her physical presence with exceptional skill, quickly becoming a centerpiece uh, to, to our success under Coach Big Drip, Don Staley. Uh, during her tenure at South Carolina, Boston achieved remarkable success, four-time consistent All-American, uh, 2022 Nate Smith College Player of the Year, recognized as a top player in college basketball, that was just a testament to her dominant performances throughout the season. A most outstanding player with the NCAA tournament in 2022. Of course, she led the team to a national championship. Uh, her leadership and skill were on full display throughout the tournament. If you forgot, go back and watch any of those games. Multiple SEC Player of the Year awards include repeated recognition uh, as just the best player in the Southeast <laughs> in the Southeastern Conference. She finished her college career with over 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, making her one of the few players in NCAA history to even reach those milestones. Rookie season in the WNBA, she showed up and showed out. Definitely um, showed everybody what being a Gamecock was all about. The standard is the standard, and she came and delivered uh, the third overall pick in the 2023 WNBA draft. She quickly transitioned to the professional stage. Uh, impressive performances. and rap She had a rapid adaptation, I think, uh, to the WNBA's level of play. It didn't take her long to, to adapt. And I, and I and I I guess I attest that and attribute that to Body by Molly and, and Coach Don Big Drip Staley and her 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 staff making sure that players are prepared. You know, like she said, she's 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 making champions and WNBA players down there in, in Columbia, and it shows with the way that they show up in the WNBA um, ready. So over the course of the season, uh, Aaliyah averaged double digits in points and rebounds, and I think you know, of course, that's what what got her that Rookie of the Year to double doubles. Um, her ability to impact games on both ends of the floor, too. I mean, it just continues to stand out. Uh, she showcased her defensive uh, ball skills, multiple blocks per game. Her offensive uh, reliability with, was was uh, with efficiency shooting from the field. Um, you could just count on her. She was you, you could go to her, but you could also tell that something was missing. Uh, she was going to need some help. There, there, there was something missing. I mean, I think that's what Caitlin Clark is going to bring, and that's why I was excited for her to go number one and get to the fever because the inside-out game that they're going to be able to have – uh, and and her ability to score in bunches and knock down uh, shots from anywhere is going to make them um, very hot and very competitive right away, I believe. So, you know, as we're looking into the WNBA season, it pretty much bolstered the roster with with, with uh, the addition of Clark. Uh, she came over, of course, uh, as number one. And I think the pairing of them is going to transform the fever uh, into a, a, a way more competitive team. I think that uh, Aaliyah is going to continue her interior, her interior dominance uh, and with Clark's perimeter excellence coming along as she continues to develop, uh, that balanced attack is going to be really hard for a lot of teams to deal with. A, a lot of teams won't have 
uh, the ability to deal with Aaliyah on the inside while while trying to contain Caitlyn on the outside. And that, that, that could prove to be a very, very lethal combination if he was right. Uh, again, I, I think that uh, I think they'll push for a playoff spot if, if they get in the playoffs and, and, and they really have their chemistry going out. Like I said, I think they can go deep. Um, but definitely thinking about a top four finish in the, in the Eastern Conference uh, for, for this young team. Uh, Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston's trajectory, uh, based on her college career, is uh, is uh, continued to is continue to rise. She's continued to rise everywhere um, that she's gone, and she continues to continues to challenge herself. So um, I look forward to uh, seeing her continue to be able to knock down the goals that she set for herself. It was great to see her um, working on the sidelines and, and doing commentary during the uh, NCAA tournament, um, and just seeing how locked in she is. You know. But being able to balance that with uh, still being able to work out and uh, keep a focus on developing her game. Um, looking forward to uh, what she's been able to, to add to her game in this offseason and in her workouts. Um, and looking forward to these two ladies uh, making a, a splash here in the WNBA. So let's jump over here and see what, uh, what Coach thinks. Well, so we got a dynamic duo, dyn dynamo duo. Dynamo mm -hmm. duo. Let's talk about figuring it. this thing out. Go, so we sir. got Aaliyah go. Boston. Go. And we got uh Caitlin Clark go. coming together. So Aaliyah Boston, y'all. I'm gonna start with Aaliyah Boston. Mm -hmm. Uh no, I'm not. I'm gonna start with Caitlin Clark. I'm gonna mm -hmm. start with Caitlin Clark. I'm gonna mm -hmm. start with Caitlin Clark because uh she's a rookie coming in. And I, let's just point out that the the Indiana Fevers um playoff game tickets are more expensive than an NBA playoff game <laughs> right now. Okay? Now, for the league, I hope that that spills over into the other teams because that would be really good. But right now, it's just the fever game. Um, so we know that Caitlin is coming in. Uh, number one pick overall. Um I saw some tape. I saw some tape of uh, Aaliyah and Caitlin working together. Uh, the two the, the two woman game looks really good. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw Caitlin give some work to somebody. I don't even know who it was. Uh, uh, hit him. Hit, hit her with the. Uh, I want to say. I want to. Almost want to say it was a crossover, but uh, definitely had got some work in there. Um, but I think those are the things that we expected from Caitlin. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what's going to keep Caitlin on the floor. Uh, is, is the defense. Uh, and Caitlin talked about it herself. Like she's going to have to to really pick that part of her game up. Um, I think that she has a, a super high IQ. Uh, I think that, you know, she, she learns quickly. Um, and I think, you know, with her being focused with, with her being forced to have to focus on defense, um, you know, at this time she's either going to have to get it or, 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 or get out of the way, you know, and I, I totally expect her to be able to get it. Um, but you know she had it. I seen her already shoot a, a logo three. Um, she was able. She was able to get a logo three down. Oh, they they have. You know, I was excited about about Caitlin uh, coming to Indiana. I've been saying that I think since we started talking. Mm -hmm. uh, no, don't go back to school. You know, come on out, mm -hmm. be number one. Go play with. Go play with Aaliyah. Uh, I you know I know people are like it's it's Caitlin's team all of a sudden now. I still feel like that's Aaliyah's team, and I still mm -hmm. feel like um, the offense has to run through her. I think mm -hmm. that that's the anchor. Uh, for offense and defense for this team, especially with um, the, the the youth coming in, the rookies coming in. I don't, I do see Caitlin coming in and being able to um, spread the floor. Uh, she's going to be able to see the floor, and make some passes, and her 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 ability to 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 make assists um, are are going to give them are, are going to make them you know more dynamic. Um, but uh, it's it's really the two man game. It's really that pick and roll and that kick out for the three. Um, that I'm interested in, but, uh, you know, if it's a kick out for the three, you know, a long, long shot, me the long rebound mm -hmm. and, you know, Caitlin, are you going for the rebound or are you getting back and trying to be the one to stop that ball? Uh, if you miss the three, um, on the, on the, uh, on the fast break. And so it's just that defense that I, that I'm really going to be looking at. It's nothing else to really question about her game, except can she play the defense? Uh, I don't think that we're going to see nearly the volume. Of, of, of shots that we that, that we saw in college but uh, you know i think that's to be expected that's you know right. i heard uh you know I, I know people took issue with diana tarasi and candace parker and cheryl swoop saying that these rookies coming in are going to have a learning curve 
Uh, but I think that's, you know, to be expected. You you go, you graduate from preschool, you go to kindergarten, it's a, it's a learner's curve. You finish high school, you go to college, it's a learner's curve. You get, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah, I never understood that, Seth. I never understood that. Well, you Okay, you're not, and respectfully, you're not talking about player one, player two, player three, WNBA player. Everybody you just mentioned are legends. Yeah, absolutely. People have to stop being so sensitive, okay? Now, could there be a little edge? It's a competitive edge even when you retire. Because you feel that you're a legend. You feel that you're one of the best. So you feel you have a right to say what you want to say, which is absolutely true. Do they see some of these players saying, yeah, I probably could take them in my best day? Absolutely they're saying that. But that's what competitors do. But when they're logically speaking about they know what it feels like to go from hotel to hotel, to have the workouts, to have things go wrong mechanically with your bus, to miss a flight, to, to be competitive in practice, to deal with personalities of coaches, to have the personnel issues and the locker issues. They're talking about all of that. They're not going into deep detail, but when they say there's a learning curve, they're including all of that. Because like you said, you're going to a whole nother realm of play. You're no longer the centerpiece of a team. When you're in college, the red carpet's rolled out for you. You do what you want to do. People open doors. They do all of that for you. When you get to the league, you're now on a team with five, six, maybe seven more players that are at the same status skill level as you. You have to learn how to play in the league. I mean, I'm sorry I had to jump in, but I get tired of hearing that from even some of the reputable commentators that like to jump on some of the current players or legends when they have what I f- feel to be a great observations on the development of these new players coming in the league. Stop all of that. You know, they don't have a right to say that or hating on what they're saying. They're professionals. Why can't they talk about it? So well, okay. and my thing is, what you asking for? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what you asking for? If you was gonna discount, if you was gonna say they don't know what they talking about, why did you ask them? You asked them because they are the veterans that came up in this league. Kelsey right. Plum didn't start uh, the Plum Dog class because it was it's easy. It's an easy trans, transition to the WNBA. She tried it because it's hard. As, she 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 started it because it's hard as hell. Mm-hmm. That's why she started it. it it's it's a, it, it, you're 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 it's, you're, you're competing. It's still a competition. It's just right. like when you go from high school to college, there, there's a learning curve. You don't you don't come in just starting unless you're a super special player. Um, exactly. And she's she's a super special player um, in some aspects, mm-hmm. but 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 not but not uh, not a total package. Definitely some work she has to do. So there's that. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So I just get tired of that. You know, when people talk about, you know, this stuff that's going on. Uh, when they ask these star players what they're doing, and then they, they do that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. When you start to think about Aaliyah Boston and how they will um, mesh, you know, Aaliyah's coming off a season where she was rookie of the year. Uh, she played in all 40 games. She came in and played about 31.2 minutes. She averaged 14 and a half points, 8.4 rebounds, 2.2 assists, and 1.3 steals. Leah mm-hmm. Boston was doing everything. She was doing everything. Um, and one other thing, wait, wait, that's one other thing. You know what? I when I was prepping for this for this show, mm-hmm. I didn't realize Leah Boston was almost shooting 40 percent from the three point line. Oh I'm yeah, like, Aaliyah, shoots a, Aaliyah shoots a three. That's, shoots a three. That's, that's better than. Like over half the guards in the league, Fords. I'm like, she's shooting 40% from the three point line. And so, you know, and that's what I mean about the, the versatility uh, that they're going to be able to have. Mm, um, mm, mm. If Aaliyah is pulling is pulling somebody out to shoot the three, if she's pulling her man, her, her woman out to shoot the three, we know that Caitlin can't get to the basket. We saw her get to the basket. Um, she can finish at the rim. Um, but, oh, boy, I feel for the opponents because now when she does not have to go out to that three, do you realize how much left hand, right hand, drop step, spin to the left, spin to the right, up fake, up and under, put my own shot back? She, do you realize well, how much happens down low? What you're going to get? 120 pounds? What you're going to get is, is a Steph and Draymond. You're going to get a Steph and Draymond pick and roll where both players can really score. Like Draymond scores when he wants to score. Now both of them are a threat. Both of them are a are a a threat from the beginning. Who? What are you gonna do? You have to pick your poison there. So, uh, like I said, I, I was I was uh excited to see them 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 come together 
uh, Aaliyah going into her second season, uh, I, I, you know, I just, I, I, I love her spirit. I love her approach. I, I feel like uh, she's, she's a very good leader. I think that she'll bring um, Caitlin along. They're already talking about they love each other. Uh, it's just everybody, everybody's happy to be in Indiana. Now I got a question for you, Seth. Here's something else that I thought about mm-hmm. on this. Mm-hmm. So we're talking about this duo, okay? Mm-hmm. Who would you say you got to pick two? Are the two happiest players on the Indiana Fever roster right now because of this duo? The two happiest players on their team right now. Uh, I gotta say that it's number one, Aaliyah Boston, because she needed some help. No, aside from them. I'm sorry, I said it wrong. Aside from Boston and Caitlin Clark, who are the two happiest players on this team because of this duo? Uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe Nalissa Smith. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. and uh I'm not sure. Maybe Lexi Hull. I'm not sure. Now I'm glad you said that. One. Because um didn't Kelsey move on? Well, she's still there, right? Kelsey. Uh, so I I have Kelsey Mitchell still here right. on my roster. So I say it's Kelsey and Nylis, and let me tell you why. When you have a duo that's bringing this much attention and this much skill set, do you realize how many open shots they're going to have? They're going to have so many open shots now because, like you said, okay, you got the pick and roll action going. You run that, what, two, three, four times. They switching up on who's going to score. Mm-hmm. Now, the only thing a defense can do at this point is double the dribbler or double the person that rolls, okay? Now, right. that's a really good team can have it to where, okay, we're going to double the, the 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 dribbler. As soon as they make their move, we're going to drop back. We're going to double, you know, whoever. But what about when they rotate like that? If they're rotating successfully, there's a way to, to defend it. You have to be elite defenders to do it. It's a way to defend it. But then they swing that thing out to the wing. Mm-hmm. And, oh, boy, you got wide open shots. You living in the corners of that little midi. And what are you gonna do when that when that when that problem comes your way? There's nothing you can do with that. Like you said, what if, what 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 happens when Aaliyah comes up and does and does sets the pick and comes up top and then Caitlin dive? What mm-hmm. happens then? I mean, it's just so many options. You know, Caitlin is notorious for getting all the way to the rim and throwing that thing up to the to the front or the top of the key for her open threes. When she lived, she lived in that land with Iowa. So it's like. That's that was just something I thought about um and, and, and prepping this material like Kelsey Mitchell. But you also got to think about too, they brought in a Celeste Taylor. Oh, see, see, right out of Ohio see. State. So you brought in a Celeste Taylor. See, see what I mean? Uh, you brought in a Leilani Correa. Stop talking. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about? You know, Leilani Correa is gonna give them some more uh the Indiana not, Fever received the AOP so much. draft picks because they drafted for need and depth. They got an yeah. A on their draft picks for that. Let's say, let's say for example, and it's just, just let me don't jump on me, fam. But you know, we talk real here during the conversation. Tragedy strikes and uh, CC gets hurt. Nobody wants to see that. But you drafted two other very formidable guards in the system that could continue to to produce. If that were to happen, you know, mm-hmm. so it's, I mean, I, I Indiana's going to be something to deal with, um, where we might have to go ahead and try to get to one of them games. The Indiana Chicago yeah. is going to be, it's probably already sold out. So we can't, well, I, I, I think, I think, I think WNBA is sold out. Yeah. 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 I think you have to get the ticket. We have to get our tickets on the, uh, so maybe we need to, you know what? So maybe we need to set up a local watch party here where we had in Michigan. Set up the satellite yeah, so. thing, you know. Have our fam on the screen, show them a little bar and pub. How we get down up in here? Gonna do something.